be comforted. This Fairfax was but a pestilent fellow, and as he had to die, it is best that he had to die thus as any other way. It was a good death. <laughs> Still, he was my husband, and had he not been, he was nevertheless a living man, and now he is dead. And so, by your leave, my tears may flow and chidden, Master Point. And thou did see all of this? Aye, with both eyes, this and that. The testimony of one eye is not he may lie, but when it is supported by the other, it is good evidence that none may gain say, and here are both in court ready to swear to him. <laughs> but art thou sure it was Colonel Fairfax? Saw you his face? Oh, aye, and a plaguy ill favoured face too, a very hanged gold face, a felon face, a face to fright the headsman himself and make him strike a wry. Oh, a plaguy ill favoured face, mark my words. <laughs> Ever thus with simple folk, an accepted wit simply has to say, Pass the mustard, and they roll their ribs out. If ever I should come to life again, thou shalt pay for this master point. Now, Elsie, thou art free to choose again. So consider me, I am young and well favoured. I have a pretty wit, I can jest you, jive you, quip you, clank you, rack you, then you shall. man, thou knowest not how to woo. <laughs> Tis not to be done with threadbare jests and time-worn sophistries, with quips, quibbles, rhymes and conundrums. Tis an art unto itself, and should be studied gravely and conscientiously. A man who would woo a fair maid must prentice himself to the trade. He should study all day in methodical way, how to flatter, cajole, and persuade. He should apprentice himself at fourteen, and practice from morning to eve. And when he's of age, if he will unengage, will capture the heart of the queen, the heart of the queen. It is purely a matter of skill. Which all may attain if they will. But every jack he must not even like if he wants to make sure of his jill. If he wants to make sure of his jill. If he's made the best use of his time. Make sure of his chill. 
Yes, every trap must study the night. Me. It is done thus. <clears throat> Mistress Elsie, there is one here whom, as thou knowest, loves thee right well. <laughs> that he does right well. He is but a man of poor estate, but he hath a good and honest heart. He will be a true and trusty husband to thee, and if thou wilt be his wife, thou shalt lie curled up in his heart like a little squirrel in its nest. Tis a pretty figure. A maggot in a nut lies closer, but a squirrel will do. He knoweth that thou wast a wife, a, an unloved and unloving wife, and his poor heart was close to breaking. But as thine unloving husband is dead, and thou art free, he would fain pray that thou wouldst hearken unto him and give hope that thou wouldst one day be his. He presses her hands and whispers in her ear. Odds bodkins, what does it mean? Now, sweetheart, tell me, wilt thou be this poor good fellow's wife? If the good brave man, is he a brave man? So men say. That's not true, uh, but, but let it pass. If the brave man would be content with a poor, penniless, untaught maid. Widow, but let that pass. <laughs> then I will be his true and loving wife, and that with my heart of hearts. My darling. Why, what's all this? Brother, brother, it is not seemly. I can't let that pass. Enough, Master Leonard, an advocate should have his fee, but methinks that thou art overpaying thyself. Nay, oh. that is for Elsie to say. I promised thee I would teach thee how to woo. Well, herein lies proof of the virtue of my teaching. <gasps> Go thou and apply it elsewhere. Oh. 
in tears, eh? What a plague art thou grizzling for now? Why am I grizzling? Thou hast often wept for jealousy. Well, tis the jealousy I weep now. I, the yellow, bilious, jaundiced jealousy, make up as a bad person, Wilfred. Oh, I've given you no cause for jealousy. The lieutenant's cook maid and I, but the merest gossips. I'm jealous of thee! Bah! I am jealous of no craven cock on a hill who crows about what he do when he dead! I am jealous of another and a better man than thou said that down, Master Wilfred! And he is to marry Elsie Maynard! The little The man thou lovest is to marry Elsie Maynard. <laughs> That's none other than thy brother, Leonard Merrill. Oh, mercy, what have I said? What manner of brother is this, thou lying little Jane Speak? Who is this man that thou hast called brother, and fondled and coddled and kissed? Oh, with my connivance too. Oh, Lord, with my connivance. Should it be this fair fact? <laughs> It is! It's Fairfax! The cursed Fairfax! Fairfax! Who? Whom? Thou hast just shot through the head! And who lies at the bottom of the river? I may have been mistaken. <laughs> we are but fallible mortals, the best of us. But I'll make sure. I'll make sure! Stay! But one word! I think... Mind I say, I think, it cannot be, uh, perhaps, as thou hast just slain, uh, perhaps, but whether he be Fairfax or no Fairfax, he is to marry Elsie, and as thou hast shot him through the head and he's dead. Oh, be content with that and I will be thy wife. Mm -hmm. Is that sure? I'm sure enough for there's no helping it. Thou art a very brute, but even brutes must marry, I suppose. My beloved. Uh. Phoebe, rejoice, for I bring glad tidings. Colonel Fairfax's reprieve was signed not two days since, but it was foully and maliciously kept back by Secretary Poultwistle, who designed that it should be delivered after the Colonel's death. It has just come to hand and is now in the lieutenant's possession. Oh, then the colonel is free? Oh, then kiss me, my dear! Kiss me again and again! What? Oh, oh, death of my life! Oh, Art thou mad? Am I mad? Are we all mad? I am well nigh crazed with joy! <laughs> I'm away from him! I'm chased! I'm hustling! I'm kissing, clinging, cockatrice! As for thee, sir, oh, I'll rip thee like a herring for this. I'll skin thee for it. I'll cleave thee to the chine. Phoebe, who is this man? Peace, fool. He is my brother. <laughs> Another brother? Have there any more of them? Produce them all at once and let me know the worst. This is the real Leonard Dalton. The other was but his substitute. The real Leonard, I say, my father's own son. Then how am I to know this? Hath he brother writ large or upon his forehead? 
Thou art a false jade. I mistrust thy brothers. Now, Wilfred, be just. Truly, I did deceive thee before, but uh, it was to save a precious life and to save it not for me, but for another. They are to be wed this very day. Is not this enough for thee? Come, I am thy baby. And we shall be wed in a year, or two, <laughs> or three, <laughs> at the very most. <laughs> Discovered our secret through my folly, and the price of his silence is Phoebe's heart. <laughs> Dear, no, Phoebe's hand. It's the same thing. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> Pity, but the Colonel's life had to be saved at any cost. And as thy folly revealed our secret, thy folly should see suffer for it. <laughs> so, here is a plot to shield this arch fiend, and I have discovered it. Oh, one word for me, and three heads besides his would roll from their shoulders. Nay, yeah, Colonel Fairfax is reprieved. <laughs> and yet, in my complicity, the scheme will know. League on the old peddler. There's nothing for it. <coughs> Hush there, pretty one. Such bloodthirsty words will become those cherry lips. Oh, Sergeant Merrill. Why, look ye, shut For many months I thought to myself, there's no glove saving up in that. Middle-aged bosom for someone, and why not for thee, that's me? So take heart and tell her, that's thou, that thee, that's me, lovest her, thou, and... And well, I'm a miserable old man, and I've done it, and that's me. No. Not a word about Fairfax. The price of thy silence is... Meryl's heart? No, Meryl's hand. Oh, no, it's the same thing. <laughs> is it? <laughs> Dolphal, dolphal, when humanity with its soulful of satanity, courting primity down, declivity seeks captivity, dolphal, dolphal, courting primity down, declivity seeks captivity, dolphal, dolphal, joyful, joyful, when virginity seeks so coyful, man, sublimity, fatal, barley, quite a barley, it is so dying, a joyful, joyful, fatal, barley, quite a barley, it is so dying, a joyful, joyful, ghastly, ghastly, when man sorrowful, firstly, lastly, all to lorrowful, after hurrying, yields to carrying, goes a marrying, ghastly, ghastly, joyful, joyful, ghastly, ghastly, joyful, joyful, ghastly, ghastly, joyful, joyful, joyful,
attend to me and shed a tear for two for I have a song to sing Love of a lady. Hey. 